Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be answering a classic question of when do we descend? Uh, doing this today we're going to be in the PMDG DC-6. Now the reason I've chosen this plane is because this is a classic example of trying to solve a lot of problems all at once with a bunch of different things. So what I've done here is I brought us up to an incredibly stupid altitude of, uh, as you can see, about 20,000 feet, which while this aircraft will certainly go up to 20,000 feet, is not really designed to do so. Our ultimate destination today is a lovely KMCO, which is also known as, of course, Orlando Airport. We're about 54 minutes away in a distance of about 206 nautical miles. So when do we descend? Now, the most common question that you've probably heard before is basically, if you're using an airliner, always do the rule of three. Now, what does that mean? It simply means take a look at your distance from the waypoint that you're interested in and then divide it by three. So in this case, if I were 100 miles away, 100 miles divided by three, that's going to be about 99. It's going to be about 33. So that would simply mean that 33,000 feet at 100 miles would be how long it would take us to descend. Another way to think about it is, let me flip it around for you. If we are at an altitude of 10,000 and we need to come to zero feet, all you would do is take the zero, one, uh, zero thousand, multiply by three, meaning 30,000, and we drop a couple of zeros, and all of a sudden we get ourselves at a lovely uh, 30, which would mean about 30 nautical miles would be the total distance we descent. So taking a look at our example here, we're 203 nautical miles away right now, but we're at an altitude of 20,000 feet. So if we do 20 times three, that's gonna get a 60. When this thing says 60 nautical miles, if we wanna go all the way down to ground level, we would have to go ahead and start a descent at that point. Keep in mind, that's for airliners. Airliners move almost double the speed that we're moving right now. Plus, uh, what if you're flying a Cessna 172 or something and you're given the instruction to cross a certain waypoint at a certain altitude? Then you begin things a little bit differently. So there's a lot of different ways to calculate this. Um, I'm a huge fan of uh, pulling out the old E6B. Uh, if you're not a huge fan of pulling out the E6B, but you happen to have yourself a regular calculator, this is a great time to go ahead and pull that sucker out. So how does this work? Well, it's pretty straightforward. What you're simply going to do is you're going to calculate how long it's going to take yourself to descend based on what descent speed that you want. For example, let's say that we want to use a thousand foot per minute descent. So 20,000 um, um, feet is how far we are. Divided by 1,000 feet per minute would mean it would take 20 minutes to descend. Now you're sitting there going, okay, that's, that's fine. I can work with that. I can work with that. So, um, okay, um, what, what, what does that mean for distance? Well, remember, it takes 20 minutes to descend. 20 minutes is about one third of an hour. How do I know? I can simply divide this by 60, and that's going to give me a value of 0.33, which means whatever my ground speed is times that number would equal how far away I need to actually go ahead and make this out. So in this case, I'm traveling at a ground speed of 236 knots. You're saying, how do you know you're doing 236? Aha, I've got a little line right here that tells me I'm doing 236. So if I now multiply this by 236, it tells me I need to begin my descent if I want to do 1,000 feet per minute, 78 nautical miles away from my actual destination. Keep in mind, if you have varying winds or something like that, this can get a little more complicated. Now, let's say we want to go ahead and do this at 2,000 feet per minute. Well, that's pretty straightforward too. 20,000 feet divided by 2,000 feet per minute is 10 minutes. 10 minutes divided by 60 makes up 0.16 of an hour. Now remember, we're traveling at 200 and uh, let's go ahead and confirm it, so I'm not going to say 39 knots. So uh, 0.16 times 239 would equal 39.83 nautical miles away from my destination. So what I'm going to do now is that we're going to go ahead and put this to the test and see just how close this actual technique works. Now, keep in mind, if you're running into situations where you have very, very long distances involved, this can be quite a bit uh, more challenging to actually run through. And of course, if you have varying winds, this can get tricky. Air traffic control, of course, is always out there to make your life as miserable as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a descent 78 nautical miles away from Orlando and see what happens. Now, if you take a look, we just crossed 20 minutes to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come on down here and disconnect this altitude control. I'm also going to go ahead and uh, start pushing the nose of the plane down just a little bit to kind of get this thing going. Remember, we agreed on 1,000 feet per minute. I'm actually going to shut off my flight engineer because if you leave this guy on, what he's going to try to do is uh, play with your ground speed a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the throttle back just a tiny bit here. We're just going to gently slow the plane down. Remember, the faster you descend, uh, the obviously the sooner we're going to get there. So you can see by pulling the throttle back just a tiny bit, I'm already under a 100 D map here. I really got to close everything up in order to keep it nice and warm here. We're already hitting 260 knots. Uh, this aircraft does not like to slow down. 
Uh, when you do these calculations with lighter airplanes, a lot of times it's a little bit simpler to do because you're going to be in a situation where it's going to come down faster. Now, the interesting thing is if I look my head here, I'm doing right around a thousand feet per minute, which is what we expected. But if I were to pull this throttle all the way back to say the minimum, which would actually sound a bunch of alarms inside the cabin, that is not going to do me much good as far as reducing that ground speed. I just have to get to the thicker part of the air in order to safely get myself down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get myself down and I will see how close we were based on our calculation. It's worth noting for a moment on descent here that our ground speed has actually gotten down to 230 knots. Probably saying, well, how did that happen? Well, take a look at our altitude. We're 7,500 feet. As the air gets thicker, it's going to start slowing you down without the consequence of pulling the throttle all the way back, meaning you're not going to get that nasty shock pulling. And the interesting thing is that we have 7 minutes and 30 seconds to get to our destination, but if you look at our altitude, our altitude is actually a little bit high, or actually a little bit low for that actually particular moment there. So it looks like our calculations were better than we expected. Let's check them out when we get to the bottom. All right, so it looks like we got about 1,500 feet to go, by one of these local high schools here, making pretty good time in this lovely airplane. And I'm looking right off the nose, and I see the distinctive, ever so uh, classic tower of uh, MCO. That's Orlando International Airport. Orlando proper is over that way. And of course, if we went to go visit Disney World, we can kind of head over there. Uh, one interesting thing here is the only thing I did the entire time during descent, other than uh, tweak my little angle here to make sure my nose is going down correctly, is I kept playing with the throttles to keep them at 25 inches for the entire descent. Now, the incredible thing here is, if I actually look over here, you can see I have about two minutes to go, and my altitude is about a thousand to go, which means our calculations were actually very, 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 very precise, even though I could have made them more precise by basically fitzing with the throttles the whole way down, constantly lowering it, be speeding up, but he didn't need to. It was actually to keep him at the same position the entire descent. So hopefully you find this uh, video helpful as far as planning your vertical descents. Again, the short version is uh, simply take your altitude, divide by your desired vertical speed. Usually 2,000 is a good number for airliners. Then simply take that number, divide it by 60, which gives you how long it's going to descend in uh, hours. Multiply that by your ground speed. Voila, you know your exact distance you need to begin your descent. Enjoy.